Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Uh, what are we doing today? So we have um, I have an interesting one, I think. I think this is going to be fun. I think this is exciting. Uh, so for those of you who may not have joined before, uh, I work on a project called Agones. Uh, it is for hosting dedicated game servers on Kubernetes. Basically, it's an extension of the open source Kubernetes platform. Um, what are we going to be doing? So let's have a look. Let's go to screencast. It's a bit better. Why is that not linked? There we go. Um, so we had an interesting issue that popped up. Oh, let's see. Recently. Recently? Uh, where are we? Where are game servers? Nope, 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 nope. Where is it? I allocated it to myself. Here we go. Um, it came through as an interesting bug report, essentially, um, in which that uh, fleets, we have fleets, right? So we have fleets, which are groups of game servers. Uh, but we also have a fleet autoscaler, which basically uh, right now has some very simple autoscaling capabilities. So we have like allocated fleets and ready fleets. And what usually happens is when you add the fleet autoscaler, it's like, okay, so, uh, so you have, you have ready game servers and allocated game servers, right? So allocated game servers are the game servers that have players on them. That's the, that's what I was trying to say. And, um, what normally happens is, um, my brain just fell over. What normally happens is that, um, when the autoscaler is in place, what happens is, is you can set up a buffer basically. And with the buffer, it's quite nice. Um, so you can basically say, make sure there's always like 10, um, 10 ready game servers always ready at any point in time. So as your uh, fleet of say five of them, or say six, say you have 10 already set up as you allocate one to that, that set, then it'll add another ready game server in and basically grow the size of your fleet up until the max replica level. Uh, and this is quite handy. This is really useful. Um, this is a good thing to have. Um, and, but there's an interesting thing. So they are separate definitions, um, to set up these, uh, where are we? These, these things. So actually well, it's probably easier if we pop over here. So if we have a look at examples, for example, um, Oh, that's interesting. That's in here. That's a whole other thing. I just realized that, but that's fine. Um, so we have a look in here, for example. So we have a fleet definition. Here we have a fleet with two game servers in it. Sweet. No problem. All sounds good. Uh, and here we have a fleet allocation. Uh, sorry, not a fleet allocation. What I want is a fleet autoscaler, which is to say, right, this is our autoscaler. It points at the simple UDP fleet and it has our buffer policy, all that kind of fun stuff too. So... Um, anyway, so that's all good. Um, and that all works really well, but we have one issue. We do have one issue and I'll show you the issue actually. So if we have, Ooh, bleh. all right. So my mini, um, let's try that again. Mini cube delete. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Let's do that instead. Um, I was going to run a mini cube cluster, but maybe I won't. Um, Maybe what I'll do is I'll just hook up to the uh, cluster I have in the sky. Uh, <laughs> let's go, cube delete. Cool. Let's make that test cluster again. Mini cubes always finicky. That's always lots and lots of fun. All right, we'll start that back up again. Um, cube steel config. Current context is a gunner's. Okay. Uh, give me that two seconds. So I'll talk through the problem instead a little bit more. So basically the problem that we hit is if you try and create a fleet autoscaler currently, uh, before you create um, the fleet, it kind of errors out. It's actually not great. So we can actually see the code in, um, in action here. And there's actually a couple of fun things in here too. So, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Mutation validation handler. Here we go. Actually, this isn't the one. Um, all right. So, no, uh, where's the, where are we? Uh, creation. There we go. So, um, Kubernetes has mutation and validation webhooks. We're actually just using the mutation webhook here to set the, um, to set the, what's the word I'm looking for? To set the default values. That's what I'm looking for. Um, but we're actually kind of doing it in the wrong spot a bit here. Um, one thing that's interesting is if you use a mutation handler and here you can see like 
we validated it and we're saying like uh actually we're doing all that validation here um which is not ideal but that's a whole other thing um if this validation fails for whatever reason and we're like nope don't like it hate it go away um the mutation handler doesn't return a really nice error message. It actually just kind of spins back a 500 and it's like, meh, I don't know, understand how this works, um, which is not, which is less than ideal. Um, and that's starting up good. So what we actually are interested in actually more than anything else is, okay, so there's, there's two kind of issues here is one, this also means you can't create a autoscaler before you create, um, before you create your fleet, which is kind of less than ideal, I think, um, in that Kubernetes is meant to be declarative, it's supposed to be self-healing, so like maybe we should allow it, I don't know. Um, but what we've been doing is basically following the model of the horizontal pod autoscaler. So if we have a look at that, Kubernetes, horizontal pod autoscaler, um, there's a couple of things, uh, I think it's this one I want. Um, so here, this is basically does the same thing for pods. You can create these horizontal pod autoscalers, which is cool. So what I want, ah, that's exactly what I want is this. Um, and I don't want any of that stuff. Yeah, I just want something simple. So what I want to see is if I can create a horizontal pod autoscaler, um, here we go. Declaratively, yep, beautiful. All right, perfect, yeah. Is I wanna see if I can do something like this, like just create a horizontal pod autoscaler. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Horizontal, basically I wanna see if I can create a horizontal pod autoscaler and do it before, like say this deployment exists and whether it lets me do that, then I'm gonna follow that pattern for um, the fleet autoscaler as well. That's basically what I'm trying to get at, right? So if I can, right now the fleet autoscaler has to be created. Um, after a fleet is created. But what I wanna do is actually see if this pattern is something I can copy. So, ah, sweet, we have, oops, shall get pods. So we actually have, ah, sweet, we have, a, we have a Kubernetes cluster now. Yay, awesome, that makes me very happy. And let's, let's try this and see if what happens. So let's actually grab this code. I'm going to copy it. Ah, lovely, that's handy. Uh, I am going to make a, actually, you can do this here, It'd be easier. What is going on? Go away, that's not what I want. Okay, uh, let's go to one, cd dot dot, uh, make dir dot temp, cd dot temp, uh, and what's what I want? Um, do, 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 nano, uh, horizontal pod autoscaler dot yaml. And let's paste that in. Looks excellent. Actually, that looks wrong, but that's fine. What I want to do is it'll show up over here in a minute and I can fix it. Sweet. All right. So we have this. So let's see if we can just apply it. Let's see what happens. Um, so, uh, oh, okay, where are we? Cool. CD. Actually, qtl apply dash f dot temp. Whoops, sorry. Temp hpa.yaml. Let's see what happens. And it looks like it works. Uh, it definitely didn't fail, so that's good. I describe uh, PHP uh, horizontal pod autoscaler PHP Apache. Um, there are no events. Actually, nothing happens. So it works. Um, so that leads me down the road of thinking that we should do the same thing for this as well, which is to say they should not be, um, they should not be, what's the word I'm looking for? There we go. Yes. And that's exactly what I was thinking too. Um, right. So what it's done here, let me clear that and I'll show that again. That'll be a bit easier to say. Um, here we have a warning where it says that it can't do the thing because it can't find the deployment rather than failing completely. And that's exactly what I was thinking of doing instead. Um, that if this doesn't work, then you show it here, but otherwise you don't worry about it. And I think that's, I think that's the right way to go. 
All right, sweet. So QTO delete HPA. Let's just fry that. All right, so let's make this work. Um, do, 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 do. All right, so we can delete this because we don't care anymore. All right, and we can come in here. All right, so let's uh, let's create a new branch and let's make this work. Uh, get check out minus b uh, bug. Uh, we'll call it decouple fleet. What do we call it? Fleet autoscaler. Just call it fa. Beautiful. Excellent. All right, so um, validate autoscaling settings. That is true. Buffer policy type. Yep. Okay, so actually we want a couple of different things here. All right, so we have a few things that need to happen actually. So to do make a proper validation handler. Um, Cause there's that. And then, all right, so if we get the fleet, error retrieving fleet, right? So this doesn't need to happen. So, in actual reality, oh, I actually don't think this mutation handler needs to be here. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, so I think we should make a proper validation handler because that'll start, that'll solve some problems. Um, one of which is that we get very bad messages otherwise, um, which is not good. And uh, let's think, let's think for a second. Uh, welcome to some of the new people who just dropped by. Nice to see you. Let me know if you need some details on what it is that I'm working on. More than happy to provide them. Um, my brain's falling over. Okay, bear with me one sec. So we are looking at uh, fleets. So if we go and I just wanna have a look. Uh, so I didn't write this, just so we're absolutely clear on that. Um, which is not to say it's bad. I just, I'm not familiar with it. Um, the code's really nice, but there's some patterns that we have. So we have a validation on update. Cool. Uh, wait, something interesting. Hold on. So here we go. Faz fleet allocation, validate auto scaling settings, which is fleet auto scalers. Hmm. I thought I was looking at this. Okay. I missed that completely. All right. So we have buffer policies. Validate update, validate auto scaling settings, validate buffer policy. Okay, cool. So this is actually really nice. Um, validate, do, 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 do. Right, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's like all kinds of goodies in here. Um, this needs to happen on validation, is what needs to happen here, because this is uh, not ideal. Uh, this is actually completely relevant. So actually let's have a look. So maybe we can flip this into a validation handler. Um, yeah, there is a second one here where it's a mutation validation handler, which is interesting. So let me, um, we have some, we have some plumbing stuff in here. Let me have a look here. So new controller, add live mistake, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So validate, we have a mutation validate. Okay. So, uh, ah, interesting. Got it. So usually we add a handler to mutate, which is a creation mutate, mutilation handler. Um, but really what we want is validate. And I think those both need to be creation validation handlers. Um, but let's have a look here. Um, so, okay, so on the update, we don't need to change anything. That's all sweet. So thumbs up there, perfect. Um, do, 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 do. All right, so what are we actually doing here? Let's have a quick peek. Let's let's step through this. All right, so uh, we get back through a bunch of JSON, which is basically what's come through in the admission review. All right, when we get this this mutation handler, so sweet. Uh, Christian mutation handler, we get the data, we unmarshal it, cool, that's fine. Um, we validate the auto scale settings. That's purely validation, cool. Uh, flame causes equals zero, like then like here's, like if that validation fails, then like spit that back out. I can work with that. That seems reasonable. Now, um, ah, this actually gets rid of this. All right, so here, we actually, like right now, we were actually throwing an error. Um, so we're actually gonna get rid of this because now if the fleet's not here, we actually don't care if it's not found. Like none of this meh, do not care. We don't actually need the fleet. We are no longer going to attach it. So before we had this set up, um, 
uh, if you're familiar with how Kubernetes works, uh, behind the scenes you may have seen stuff where like if you delete a deployment, then like you'll get a pod and that'll go away. Um, if you do this, yeah, if you delete a deployment, it'll, it'll delete all the backing pods. It's all through this thing called controller refs, these owner reference things. Um, so we can actually, now that we're decoupling all this stuff, we actually don't care about um, having the, con the, fleet, the, the fleet autoscaler be hooked up to the fleets themselves. So we can get rid of that. Sweet. Um, don't care about that. Uh, we're not creating an autoscaler, so we're not doing that either. Um, so that means actually that we're not applying anything here. Uh, we don't need to create the patch. We don't need to do any of this stuff, actually. Um, yeah, that's really it. I just want to have a quick look. I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, brand return review nil. So this actually becomes a creation validation handler. This becomes our creation validation handler. Uh, let's just have a quick look and see if there's anything else that needs to happen. Oh, we have tests. Excellent. Uh, we'll need to make sure that those pass. Um, that all looks pretty good. So we'll do that refactor. Uh, and nope. and validate its settings. Now, just to have a quick look on the mutation handler, we do a validate update. Okay, so that's slightly different. All right, cool. Um, that becomes easier. All right, so there's that. So I don't need to make a crit uh, that. What I do need to do up here is this becomes part of validate instead. Um, it's part of our validation handler. So sweet, awesome. That makes that easy. Um, what I will also need to do is in our CRD, Helm, Agonis, template, CRDs, uh, fleet autoscaler, yes. No. Oh, where is this? <laughs> Admission registration. Ah, uh, here we go. Where are we? Create resources. Mutation is validation. Ah, uh, here we go. So mutation handlers, fleet autoscalers. Nope. Uh, nope. Don't want you anymore. And I don't know what that is. And. <laughs> Um, here, create, no, this is validations. Oh, interesting. And there is a validation there, but it's not, oh, interesting. Okay. But mutating webhook, fleet allocations. Yes, yes, yes. That's all very important. Here, there's already fleet order scalers. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I have some plumbing that's already set up for this. I think um, that basically if it doesn't exist, then it just, there's no handler and it lets it through. So that's fine. Okay. So we have fleet autoscalers here um, and we'll have some testing on this too. So it's fine. Um, cool. That looks a bit better. Um, that seems pretty legit actually. That all looks pretty good. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? All right, cool. Um, we wrote this. We got controller test. We have a. This is a creation. No longer a create. This is now a mutation handler. Sorry, a validation handler. Uh, let's see if that. I've got a feeling one of these is going to fail. Just fine. Yep. What actually failed? Let's have a look. Do 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 do. Fleet or scaler here. Ah yes, we have no patch type. Nope. There is no patch type. Uh, we don't care about that at all. Which one should be allowed? Yep. Fleet scaler has a fleet. Um.
Oh, look, that's an interesting question. Um, don't think this matters too much. Has a fleet or doesn't have a fleet? Nah, I don't know if we actually care about this. This is not the stuff we actually want to test. Um, so I'm going to dump that. And fleet scaler, what do we actually want to test now? We want to test... That's my dog. She's saying hello. Uh, what do we want to test? How do we have done? We're good. Yeah, I know. There's friends upstairs. Validate auto scaling settings. That's more what I want to test. So uh, I'd like to just see that this gets called uh, buffer policy type. Cool. Validating auto scaling buffer policy types. Cool. Uh, yeah, what happens if I just do something that's like invalid? Yeah, that's a good, let's just make sure that works. Like there's no buffer policy config patterns. That sounds like a good one. So let's do that. So let's got default fixture. That looks fun. Uh, that's the fleet order scaler in the fleet. So what's the fleet order scaler look like? Buffer policy type. Uh, let's make buffer null. Um, Fleet auto scaler. Ah, where is sorry? Ah, I just lost what I was looking for. Controller tests. Here we go. Well, actually, let's do this. Uh, should be a valid fleet auto scaler. And I'll steal this. Um, actually, do not care about this at all. And invalid. Let's just run this one real quick. Make sure that still passes. I think that should be fine. No, F was declared and not used. Where are you complaining? Oh, I don't care about the fleet in the slightest. Try that now. Compiling. Beautiful. That passes. Beautiful. All right, but what we want is an invalid one. So let's try that. Uh, so we have default fixtures. We do not care about this because we're not grabbing fleets. Uh, faz dot spec dot policy dot buffer equals null. Cool. Uh, this makes it invalid. Cool. New mission review. Uh, response should not be allowed. The response should be. Oh, uh, should be false. And uh, we should probably see some other things, but let's. Beautiful, that works. Whoops, I don't need to run it again. Uh, what else do we do to the response here, just so I can see it? Uh, controller test. Uh, not fleets, that one, autoscaler, perfect. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Um, and I'm trying to see if there's any details. Yeah, that sounds like good. I'm just gonna make sure the details is not empty, I think. Response to result, here we go, status, status failure. Yeah, let's grab some of this stuff. Equal t result dot response dot status. Uh, where are we? Where did that end up? Result dot status. Is that where I end up? Status status message reason. Uh, cool. Let's print some extra stuff in here. Whoops. Uh, actually, I can do this, and then I'll flip it. Uh, I say that because the left-hand side of the one is meant to be the uh, actual expected. And we'll grab this again, and we will call it, uh, where are we? What do we also want? Uh, reason. Reason would be good. That makes me happy, too. Uh, no, uh, invalid. Actually, let me grab it from here. Thank you. Reason. Beautiful. Cool. And assert. Let's just say not empty. I'll be a little lazy with it. Uh, result dot response. 
dot uh, result dot details. Uh, no, it doesn't like me doing that. Oh no, it's happy. Yeah, just make sure there's some stuff in there. I'm not gonna go too deep. I'm just happy that there's stuff. Excellent. Okay, that looks pretty good. Beautiful. That looks pretty. That's like that's a good that's a good start. Awesome. Those tests are passing. All right, so let's commit this as a start. Commit start of moving validation over. Um, sweet. This is going to make my life a lot happier. All right, cool. Um, now, so in theory, we haven't tested it yet, but in theory, we should now be able to create an autoscaler externally from um, the fleet autoscaler. There's one thing I really do want to say, and, there, and now we have these validation handlers, which actually work a lot nicer, and we can we can test some of that out using kubectl, um, which we'll do, yeah, we should do in a minute or two. But here's one thing I do want to do, which is to say, actually, there was one thing I wanted to look at in here, which was uh, here. Uh, validate update, let's have a look here. Let's have a quick look. Um, if spec dot fleet name right, so now they're okay. This is interesting. Uh, fleet name cannot be updated. Do we really care? Is actually an interesting question. Once you've set a fleet name, can you change it? Let's say no. Let's leave it with no. I don't think that's unreasonable. Um, the reason I say that is mainly because if I look at a fleet autoscaler and I look at some of its status information, this information is, oh, interesting, able to scale. I didn't even see that before. Yeah, you see, this is what happens when I actually see stuff. Um, then this becomes invalid if you moved it to another fleet. So I don't, I don't like that. That doesn't make me happy. Um, I'm curious to see what this does though. So let's leave it as you can't change the fleet name. Um, you have to create a new autoscaler. That seems reasonable. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm actually okay with that. I think that's fine. Um, I wonder if you can do this on an HPA. Change the name. Anyway, let's worry about that later. Um, yeah, what happens here? This is actually really interesting. Update status equals true, able to scale. Interesting. Uh, update status, unable to scale. What does... So the ability to fleet us in case you're not able to scale. Interesting. I wonder what that means. Um, I might actually ask when I do this too. Okay, so let's actually have a look. Uh, where does this get called? This is interesting digging through this stuff. Um, do, 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 retrieve the fleet by spec name. Yep. Update status unable to scale. We should actually couldn't find fleet, skipping, etc. It's not found. I'm trying to, wait, what? All right, retrieve the fleet. All right, so where are we? Let's have a look. So we're syncing our fleet autoscaler. Let's have a look through this. Let's just dig through it. We grab the namespace and the name from the key that comes through on our sync command. This is pretty standard Kubernetes controller stuff. Uh, we grab our fleet autoscaler, totally reasonable. All right, we can't find it, right? Something happened or maybe it's been deleted, cool. We retrieve the fleet by the spec name. Sweet, no dramas there. Um, if it's not found, all right. At this point, I feel like we should be, right, could not find the fleet for us go skipping. Fleet was not found in namespace. We kick it out or maybe we don't care. 
Ooh, and I'm actually wondering... Do we... Do we do that? That's an interesting question. So the fleet's not found. We couldn't find it. Skipping. We actually should return nil. We will sync back up again in 30 seconds. Uh, so I don't think... Because we have a sync period that's every 30 seconds, so which we hit anyway. So let's do that. Um, What does this do? Result equals errors dot wrap f. Um, what the f I don't understand. That's fair enough. Oh, I think I get it. Uh, sync period. So what we what we should actually do at this point is uh, make an event saying we couldn't find the fleet. So that's important. We need to do that. Um, this is actually not important. We update the status is unable to scale. Uh, because something has gone wrong. Right, got it. Um, yep, yeah, not found a namespace. Still unable to scale. Like something's gone horribly wrong. Okay, so this is this is a horribly horribly wrong thing. I still don't know about this able to scale thing. Um. Now that I'm looking at it, like I don't know why it's there, uh, or do we care? I feel like that's something that we might want to get rid of. Scaling limited. Scaling limited is that the calculated scale would be above or below the range of and has thus been capped. Oh, oh, that's interesting. That makes sense. I can work with that. Um, interesting. This makes sense. This makes sense. This makes sense. Um, interesting. Uh, stuff that I'm, I'm actually going into. This thing. Kubernetes, GitHub. I just want GitHub Kubernetes. I don't want any of that stuff. Um, I'm gonna look at the actual code. Horizontal, part of scalar, yes. Um, boop, 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 boop. I just want a horizontal pod auto scalar. Give me one. I know we have one in here somewhere. I wanna see what statuses they have. I might tweak a couple of things while I'm in here. Not sure, I haven't decided. Um, for controller, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, uh, go to definition, beautiful, yeah, let's go to that, that's fine, and nope, uh, what I want is a thing, I just want the, the actual horizontal pod autoscaler, here we go, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, all right, cool. Uh, status, thank you, perfect, here we go. So generation, last scale time, beautiful. Yeah, see, like, what is some of this stuff? Um, that's all reasonable. All right, um, able to scale. So maybe I will pull it and see if he hates it. These scaling limited things seems weird to me, to be honest. Uh, that's what an event's for. I feel like that's what that should be for. 
Um, and also, it, this doesn't do that anymore. So I'm just going to drop it. Because um, it's actually not true. Uh, and the code wasn't doing it. So let's just let's just scrap it. Um, interesting, where does this get used? Yeah, I feel like that should be all events, to be honest. I feel like that's what it really should be. Um, but let's see, let's see. Okay, well, we'll strip that out. I'm gonna dump that. I'm sure there'll be some stuff that breaks. And, but what I wanna do, here we go. Update status, yeah, nope, go away. Uh, scaling limited. Let's see, that seems really interesting. I might come back to this. Um, I might come back to that. This seems like a extra thing that's not necessary and also just didn't seem valid. Okay, um, here, let's just make this event. Uh, how do I make events again? Thank you. So what? Uh, event type warning. Uh, actually, I had one of these. What was it? Uh, let's have a look. Not that one. Here, failed get scale. I will say failed get fleet. Um, we're actually putting this on the on the fat. It's perfect. Um, what do you normally say? Could not fetch. Here we go. Uh, could not fetch. What do you say? Would not fetch fleet uh, percentage s slash percentage s. Uh, actually, um, just fez dot spec dot fleet name. Um, And then we're like, okay. And then we're just gonna wait for the next sync period because we actually don't care. This is if something goes absolutely horribly wrong. Uh, which kind of makes sense. I'm kind of okay with that. Um, if API quality semantic tb equals first status does not equal, oh, okay, right, 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 right. Right, you only do it once, which is fine. Um, if something goes horribly wrong, eh, unable to scale. Is this actually going to even happen? Like, I'm just trying to think if I get to this part of the code, it's Basically, because, yeah, like, um, so if I try and get a fleet and like, like basically the, like the only way this really fails is the master's down. If the master's down, this is not doing anything. Um, it kind of seems like. This isn't necessary. To be honest, like if that horribly, horribly fails, then master's down, like, and this is never gonna work. Now, Here's a more interesting scenario, I feel, which is if the fleet is not found and previously it was, then we should drop this down. So in fact, actually, this is useful, but just not for what we think we thought it was. 
which is to say, um, where are we? Uh, controller, here we go. So if we can't do this, then let's do that. Because at that point, that actually makes more sense. Um, or do we do that? Hmm. That, that should actually happen like that. Sorry, wrong way around. Something more like that, maybe? Um, Do we need to do that? Just as a quick thing. Um, oops, I'm in the wrong one. Might be able to tie this up a bit more. Let's have a look here for a sec. Bear with me. So work Q, work Q, here we go. Um just no work on blah blah blah. Where's my sink handler? There's my dog. One time handler. Yeah, I don't know if we need the extra the extra error there. Um Yeah. What do I normally do? This is a really good question. I haven't written a controller in a really long time. Um, let's controller. Let's look at our sync handler. I just want to have a quick look. I'm just cleaning up some stuff in here. Okay, so that's basically the pattern. What is that anyway? Yeah, interesting. All right, that's fine. Um, cool. So worker queue, worker queue, sync handler equals error. Then we handle it anyway. That's fine. I don't think that's a problem. Um, Yep, that's fine too. We get the fleet. Otherwise, I think we just get too much. Um, if we're unable to scale, yeah. So if this isn't found, we spit that out. That's fine. We try and update this thing. Um, let's think this through for a sec. Am I happy with this? If master goes down, which is usually like the thing that breaks things, right? Master goes down, it's being upgraded or something breaks. Um, and this fails, right? It's not that it's not found, it's that something weird happens. And here we go. Then we, okay, so if it's, if whatever, it's not there, cool, I'm totally okay with that. Like, let's log it, beautiful, with error, right? Could not find fleet autoscaler. 
uh, fleet for auto scatter skipping. Yep, and we record an event so that's visible to the user. Um, I think that's that's good. That's what we want. Um, then we update. All right, so if this happens for any reason, update status. Yeah, that's fine. Everything drops down to zero, which is totally reasonable. Um, and also makes sense for any kind of stack collection. So actually, I'm okay with that too. Um, this is weird. I don't know if I like this, um, but that's a whole other thing. It could be useful though. Actually, I'll leave it at that. It could be, I could see it being useful as something like you want to alert on it. Like I get that. Um, so, hmm. I'm not a hundred percent on it to be honest. Scaling limited. This I feel like this should be an event. And then it's actually trackable. I think I'm gonna do that too. Turn this into an event. Because then you get timestamps and all that other good stuff too, right? Like so if I look at my events in here, you can actually see like how old that is and when it happened, um, which is better. <clears throat> um, cool. So we're gonna do that too. Um, I still wanna just stare at this, this bit of code. It's kind of freaking me out. This is what happens when you dig into things. All right. Um, if that fails for whatever reason, then we return the error, which I'm okay with. That's fine. Here. There's no fleet, right? That makes sense. Like if we had a fleet, we delete the fleet, update, and you should drop everything down to zero. That totally makes sense. I completely agree with that. If that fails for whatever reason, it's errored. If... This passes for some reason, and this doesn't. It's gonna come back around in 30 seconds anyway. Uh, hmm. Interesting questions. So if we come down here, fleet comes through fine. Then we actually do, yeah, this double handle here is weird. All right, so we can actually tidy this up a little since we're here. There we go, that's, that's neater. I'm just tidying that up. Um, errors to do no, yep, that's fine. Right, like bad things happen, we're gonna try and do that. Um, Date status unable to scale. Still feels just replaced on the update on the That's already there. That's fine. That's cleaner. Uh, I can do this too. All right. 
That's a bit neat. That's a bit neater. That should solve some of those problems. Hopefully, I haven't got any other tests. Um, cool. Status, they check if they're the same. Actually, I don't think you need to do that. And I'll tell you why. Um, I think the system does it for you. I don't think you need to make that check. Trying to think. Um, yeah, DP equals a bit of a pain. Um, I'll leave it. I don't think it's actually necessary, but I'm going to leave it. It's not, it's not something I think we do, the actual controllers do. It's an interesting question there, but that's fine. Um, Just trying to think, actually. Eh, I'll leave it. I don't know if they do that in any other. I don't think I've ever seen that in any of the Kubernetes controllers. Now you've got me wondering. Uh, not that. Yeah. Bleh. Go back to master. No, just go into Kubernetes. Kubernetes. We're just going on here. Stop. Bah. Bear with me one sec. I want to see. Oh. The internet dropped. Okay. 